Greetings YouTube, the doctor is in, Dr. Urias Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and Dragons and welcome back to the channel that brings power gaming to the next level. Today on the Doctor Spell Prognosis, we are talking about the spell Prismatic Wall. We are giving this spell an S, but first don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a question or comment and don't forget to hit that notification bell. So you know when I have another video out. All right. So let's talk about this spell. This is a absolute combat enter. This is that's one of the one of the points that I make as to why I give certain spells good grades and other spells not so good grades. One of them is if it is a spell that will essentially end combat. That is make combat a moot point for the players or then it it should get an s and this is one of those uh there are certain things that have to happen for this to be set up correctly but if you understand those then then combat will be over with very quickly so let's get into it all right prismatic wall is a ninth level spell that is usable by wizards so there is that. It is only usable by wizards. However, bards and warlocks can pick it up as well. And uh, it's, it's uh, very, again, it's very obvious to me there were certain spells that were written in the player's handbook, Xanthar's and Tasha's in a certain way, and all are not equal. So all of the 7th level spells are definitely not equal to each other. All the 6th level spells are definitely not equal to each other. And same goes for all of these ninth level spells. They are apparently not equal to each other because some far outweigh others in their utility, their use, their ability to, to do great things, and their ability to essentially end a combat or be strategic. Not tactical, but strategic. So uh, Prismatic Wall is a ninth level spell usable by wizards. It has a casting time of one action. Fantastic. A range of 60 feet, fantastic. Verbal and somatic components, fantastic. It lasts for 10 minutes and is not concentration, fantastic. It is an abjuration spell. Abjuration is one of my favorite schools because of the Dwarmer Knot. If you haven't seen that video, I will put a link at the end of this video and below for that particular video, but that is another awesome, awesome use for this i only took the dwarmer knot up to 11th level which is a eighth level wizard second level warlock first level fighter but with the three levels one fighter two warlock you've got 17 levels left so you can definitely make a 20th level and get this spell it is just absolutely phenomenal for that okay it says kanse but we're going to get into that a shimmering multicolored plane of light forms a vertical opaque wall up to 90 feet long 30 feet high and one inch thick up to so it's up to those it doesn't have to be that dimension it can be up to those dimensions centered on a point you can see within range alternatively you can shape the wall and this is the better one you can shape the wall into a sphere up to 30 feet in diameter centered on a point you choose within range that in my opinion that's kind of the better option. So, but it is, it is a sphere. So, um, you know, it it can go. It does go all the way around. The wall remains in place for the duration, which is ten minutes. If the position, if you position the wall so that it passes through the space occupied by a creature, the spell fails, and your action and the spell are wasted. Don't do that. Because you only get one slot for ninth level spells. You don't want to waste this. The wall sheds bright light out to a range of 100 feet and dim light for an additional 100 feet. And it's ninth level bright light, by the way. So if there's any darkness, it's gone. It will automatically be gone. There, the, the, I mean, it's just, this is a ninth level spell. So you and creatures you designate at the time you cast the spell can pass through and remain near the wall without harm. That means the next sentence doesn't really apply. And you can go in and out, uh, and you know you can use it as kind of a, uh, an operating base to do all your combat tactics from inside the wall to outside the wall. Now, it is opaque, so you can't see outside of it, but you can step outside and step back in 
and because you designated the beginning of this, who ha- who gets harmed and who can pass through and who can't, there you need to remember that. If another creature that can see the wall, that means another creature that you didn't designate when you cast the spell, if another creature that can see the wall moves to within 20 feet of it or, or starts their turn there, the creature must succeed on a constitution saving throw or become blinded for one minute. So that's the first bad thing. That's really bad. Okay. And your, your saves at this point should be around 20 or 21 DC. The wall consists of seven layers, each with a different color. When a, a creature attempts to reach into or pass through the wall, it does so one layer at a time through all the wall's layers. So it doesn't say when it starts its turn or it doesn't say... It says... It says when it enters, but it says it in a very different way. It says when it attempts to reach into or pass through the wall. It does through so one layer at a time. As it passes or reaches through each layer, the creature must make a deck saving throw or be affected by that layer's properties as described below. So you can push and pull things, and it doesn't say on a turn. So, or once per turn. A lot of these spells say when a creature enters for the first time on a turn, this is, you can push things back and forth in this thing and they will be subjected to this ad nauseum. Okay, the wall consists of seven layers, each with a different color. When a creature passes into, when a creature attempts to, uh, it does so one layer at a time. So it has to make a deck save. And then the wall can be destroyed also one layer at a time in order from red, which is the outside, so when everybody looks at it, they see the red, to violet, by means specific to each layer. Once a layer is destroyed, it remains so for the duration of the spell. Anti-magic has no effect, and dispel magic can only affect the violet layer. So that's the last layer. Okay, so if you fail your save against the red, you take 10d6 fire damage, half on a successful save, So again, that's 35 points of damage on average. While this layer is in place, non-magical ranged attacks cannot pass through the wall, and it can be destroyed by dealing at least 25 cold damage. Now, one thing I do like about this is this spell has, whoever wrote this one, obviously paid attention to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, 2nd edition and 3rd edition, because this spell has moved into through the additions very similarly and it hasn't changed very much okay so orange failed the deck save takes 10d6 acid damage half as much as a successful one while the layers in place magical ranged attacks cannot pass you the wall that spells too because they're magical ranged attacks the layer is destroyed by a strong wind so a gust of wind will get rid of it yellow failure save deck save lightning damage Half as much on a, on a successful save. This layer can be destroyed by dealing at least 60 force damage to it. So uh, things like um, magic missile, things like that. Green, poison damage. Half as much on a successful save. A pass wall spell or another spell of equal or greater level can open a portal on a solid surface destroys this layer. So pass wall is a good one. Now you'll notice the first two layers stop non-magical and magical ranged attacks. The other layers don't really do that. Uh, blue, fifth layer. Creature takes 10d6 cold damage. Layer can be destroyed by dealing at least 25 fire damage. Layer number six, indigo. On a failed save, the creature is restrained. Now the thing about this is if they fail it, they're stuck in the wall. But starting your turn in the wall does not trigger the wall. Passing through the wall triggers the wall. So technically, they're not going to be subject to all the layers when they start their turn in the wall. But they are stuck. Now, if you push them out and then push them back in, they're not moving, but they're going to be subject to the layers again. So it must make a con save at the end of each of its turns. If it successfully saves three times, the spell ends. If it fails three times... It permanently turns to stone and is subjected to the petrify condition. Successes and failures don't need to be consecutive. Keep track of both until the creature has collected three of a kind. While this layer is in place, spells can't be cast through the wall. The layer is destroyed by bright light shed by a daylight or similar spell of equal or higher level. So you can't cast spells out or in. 
So it stops all spells, stops all magical ranged attacks, and stops non-magical ranged attacks. Okay. Violet, on a failed save, the creature is blinded. Must then make a wisdom saving throw at the start of your next turn on a save, successful save. It ends a blindness. If it fails, the creature is transported to another plane of the GM's choosing and is no longer blinded. Typically, a creature that is on a plane that is in a home plane is banished, while other creatures are cast in the astral ethereal, ethereal planes. The layer is destroyed by dispel magic or similar spell of equal or higher level that can end spells for magical effects. So, that does a lot. It does a lot, and it is nasty. So let's talk about pros and cons of this spell. There are a lot of pros. Range of 60 feet, verbal somatic component, 10-minute duration without concentration, selectively affect enemies. So your party can sit inside of this thing if you make it a sphere and dodge in and out of it while the enemies can't. You are also not subject to the blinding effect from the light while your enemies are. Um, layers do a ton of damage. Each one of those first five does 35 points of damage or half as much on successful saves. There's seven effects. It blinds everything within 20 feet of it, plus the last one can blind. You can vary the diameter of it or the, the size of the wall, and it is extremely hard to destroy. You have to follow all of these very complicated steps to get rid of all of it. And it stops non-magical range attacks, ranged ma uh, range, magical range attacks, and magic spells. So all of that stuff keeps you very well protected. Now, uh, there are a couple and only a couple cons. It's opaque. So if you're inside of it, you can't see out. Now, you could cast this around an enemy and make it so that your party can go in and out. Now, you've got them in the middle, and you're on the outside. You can dash in and attack them and dash out, and they can't, um, they can't, well, they can get out, but if they try to move through it, they're going to get whacked. You can dash in, push them through the wall, and they'll be subject to all the layers as they go through the wall. And if they're still around when they get to the other side, somebody that's sitting on the other side can push them right back in, like on the next turn. So, But it is opaque, so you can't really see what's going on. And then um, the other thing is this mechanic where it has to pass through but not start. So it has to pass through, but it's not once per turn. It's whenever it passes through. All right, so some things that I, I think uh, work well with this. Great spell for the DM as well. It's a great spell for big, bad, evil guys. Um, I've, uh, Matt Mercer used this pretty well when he used it with um, Delilah. And uh, I, it's just a great spell. I mean, I... I wish I had used this once with a Sararak. Who knows? That could happen again. It is a nasty, nasty spell. Forced movement works really great with this spell, so talk with your party about it. And it is an abjuration spell. And the reason I bring that up is because you get an arcane ward and the hit point maximum is equal to twice your level plus your intelligence modifier so you're probably going to be a 17th to 20th level. So that's 34 plus probably 5. So 39 to 45 points. And when you cast this spell, because it's an abjuration spell, the ward regains the number of hit points equal to twice the spell level, which is 18. That's fantastic. That is awesome. So you get that little bit of extra on top of this great spell for the abjuration spell. And again, this is a great spell for that dorm or not uh, that I'll put a link in. All right, that is what I have for everybody today. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I will catch everybody later. <laughs>